Hey everyone, I just want to wish everybody a, uh, an amazing Easter. Uh, I think that right now as we are coming into this time where we are remembering what the Lord did for us, this is one of the key things for us to keep in mind that as we look upon the crucified Christ, that's actually where we find our strength. Uh, it's the, the weakness of Jesus that actually gives us strength. Uh, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, he says, I will rather boast in my weaknesses for when I am weak than I am strong. And then he also writes, to be sure, Christ was crucified in weakness, but he lives by the power of God. And then he writes, uh, then we also will live by the power of God unto you. And what we can take from this is that when we are experiencing the weaknesses in our life, we are actually experiencing a very delicate and very holy moment. It is actually a revelation of how God is coming to meet us in those places to take us beyond our own abilities. Uh, the realization of our weakness is actually the invitation of God into His strength. Why that's a good thing? Because when we are looking at ourselves and we're trying to understand what we want to do in our lives and how we're going to go about this, what can God do with me? We realize, man, I don't got to do anything but really live by faith. And that's kind of where I want to go with this today. My own story um, is, a, is a big part of, about just my topic about God using just the little ones, the un seeming ones. My family were, came from, to the U.S. as immigrants. I mean, we, I learned English being born here, but I uh, spoke two languages in the house. Uh, I went to, to uh, um, a, a multicultural church for the majority of my life. I mean, uh, just growing up in a very interesting subcultured environment. Um, why I'm saying this? Because in the, that kind of background growing up, I never really expected to find myself where I'm at today. That This whole came about as a huge surprise. The, the, the things that God had led me on um, and where I have been and, and who uh, and some of the people that I got to meet. I mean, some of the opportunities that I've been able to be a part of, all of those things are shocking to me. Because I don't think not only me, but my family and people around me just did not see it coming. I remember when I was 15 years old, I was in jail, got arrested for um, for fighting and for a robbery. I began to pray in that cell and just began to give my life back to Jesus Christ. I, I just, I said, Jesus, just take my life. I don't know how I got here, but I just need you. Just And I remember praying, God, I don't care if I have to spend the rest of my life in here, all I know is I just need you. And I remember how the presence of Jesus came in that room. I remember falling in love with him the next few weeks and months that followed and times that I had fallen, he would pick me back up like how he picked Peter up out of that water when he stumbled and fell. Man, I stumbled and fell a few times, but he was so faithful to keep coming back. And I remember there came a point, I call it like my D-Day. I remember being at the service and I was just so down and, and, I, and I, it felt like I could never be used by God. I was like, Lord, you can forgive me. Um, I think, you know, I, when I die, I'll be with you, but I'm not sure if you can ever really use me again. Cause I just, I fell down and I, and I, and everybody found out about it. My reputation was ruined in many circles and I'm sitting there in this church service and I didn't even want to sit in the front. I was kind of like, I didn't want to go all the way in the back either. Uh, I just sort of kind of sat somewhere in the front middle section by the side so I can get up and leave if I had to. And I remember the Lord telling me during the prayer, because everybody was sitting while we we're praying, the Lord spoke to me, said, stand up. And I said, how can I stand up? Everybody knows what I've been through. Everybody knows where I've been. And, and, and that feeling left my gut. And then I said, Lord, if that was you, tell me to stand up again and I will. 
And as soon as I prayed that a few seconds later, I felt that strong electric pulse inside of me. And I felt those words stand up. And it was like this, this, this act of faith that I need to do to stand up and receive what God wanted to do. And as I acted on that, I stood up and the presence of the Holy Spirit came on me. And the man came up and began to prophesy and said, you will never have a problem with your faith again. I remember being shaken up and I began to fall in love with the Lord at this time. My prayer, I said, Jesus, just whatever it takes, whatever it looks like, just take my life. Just whatever it is, just take it. Whatever, whatever you have made available through the cross, I want it. I'm not willing to call myself a Christian. I'm not willing to profess this faith and not have the manifestation of what you came and what you said you came for happen in my life. And whatever the cost, whatever, the, whatever it is going to take, I want it. I remember listening to sermons and a, a, a man named David Wilkerson one time was sharing a sermon. It really messed just my heart up. And he was talking about um, being baptized in anguish and how all true ministry comes out of feeling and knowing the anguish of God's heart. And I just began to pray. And I heard another sermon by the same man, David Wilkerson, and he was talking about in his own life, how he was just didn't want to grow complacent. And how he was walking around and he said, God, thank you for this car. Thank you for the shoes. Thank you for the house. But one day it's all going to burn. And, 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 and he was talking about having this eternal uh, perspective, this drive to live for something more than what what is around in front of me just having eyes that see the lamb of god and and he and he prayed and he said um lord whatever it takes whatever it takes keep me on my knees and that's my prayer and that became my prayer i adopted it. and i remember just weeping before the lord and said god whatever it takes whatever it looks like whatever it means keep me on my knees and, and what i meant by that is make me a man of prayer Make me a man of your word, a man of encounter. I just want to be a person that just seeks your face and just knows who you are. And, and I just I just I wanted that. I like, that's what I wanted more than anything else. And he began to answer that. He began to put a drive inside of me. And I'll tell you, the journey that I've been on, it wasn't because I was some uh, greatly gifted person. I mean, I look at all the accomplishments and things that have come my way. And I'm, I don't realize, Lord, if it wasn't for you, I'd have nothing I would have absolutely nothing. I'd be broke. And, and, and anything that looks like it's uh, anything that looks valuable in my life, it's because his grace breathed on my brokenness. And those things that he'd always intended for me, the things he created me for, my design in the Lord, all of those things through his breath found their life and came into their purpose. It was what he intended for me the whole time. But I'll tell you something, without him, I would not have a little even piece of it. And that became the key utter dependence on the Lord. Man, I'm not out trying to look for a big ministry. I'm not looking for big influence just for the sake of influence. I want God to get glory through my life and I want to know him. I want to know him more than anything else. I want him to use me and and to see the things he said become fulfilled in my life. I remember I went to a couple of prayer meetings, began to just get together with friends. We would gather around and pray. I heard about a conference happening in Oregon. My friends and I last minute sat into the car and drove down this conference. And that's when I first heard a man named Todd White and Dan Moeller. And at first, the first time I heard of the message of identity. And I was so wrecked when I began to learn who I am in Christ apart from anything I've ever done. About how much he loves me and cares about me. And, and it, just re it just changed my whole relationship with the Lord. Tom Rotolo, who is doing these conferences, a school of power and love, who now also helped Todd White start Lifestyle Christianity. Christianity. Well, he was up there sharing a testimony about Global School of Supernatural Ministry. I was writing my notes and wrote it down. I came back to Washington State and I took that message of identity with my friends and we shared it with the rest of our friends and community and it just blew up. People began to know their identity, began to prophesy, began to see the sick get healed, began to move in, in different giftings and signs and wonders. It was incredible. We didn't know what was going on, but we knew it was good and we knew it was God. Long story short, and I'm going to Pennsylvania. I served there for two and a half years, uh, or taught, was learning for two and a half years, and then ended up interning for Dr. Randy Clark. I'm getting to travel with him, going to different parts of the world, seeing metal disappear from people's body, seeing cancer get healed, incredible miracles. I get to meet some of my heroes in the faith, Bill Johnson, Heidi Baker, all these people, John Arnott. I'm seeing these people, and I'm like, 
I mean, I'm just amazed. I'm like, what am I doing here? The son of immigrants, person who no one in my family saw this coming. I mean, I was a high school dropout. I had been failing all my classes. I had been in jail. Uh, I was, re you know, recovering from all the the smoking and the drugs and drinking that I was doing. I mean, all that stuff. I had. They people didn't think I was going to recover. I did at that time, but you know, just uh, my life was not going the right way before I met Jesus, and so no one saw this coming. After I. Gave my life to the Lord people would just be happy if I could just get a good job and live a normal life but I I couldn't live a normal life normal just was out of the window I needed Jesus he rose from the dead that means my life can't look the same it means I can't live in fear of death that means I can't live in uh, the uh, evaluation of my, my material wealth and determination of my potential destiny that is absolutely not okay if Jesus rose from the dead if the power that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of me I better believe that there's something that I'm supposed to live and walk in as a normal daily experience and it doesn't it's not about what kind of opportunities come my way it's not about what kind of doors open up it's what am I going to do with what's right in front of me with the life that I have how can I just lay down on the altar everything that I am because he's he's claimed my life for him and that's really what it came down to I think that is what that my journey has been from the very beginning is how can I just give Jesus my everything so I finished my internship I was in Brazil and uh, I didn't know what was next I felt a call for full-time ministry I heard some friends are going to Colombia to the Amazon jungle so I chart my flight straight from Brazil, going straight there. While I was there, I'm praying, and I, again, I have no monthly support. This is just money that I had been able to gather up. I moved a lot of my different speaking engagements to come closer to this date after I had finished my internship so that I could speak at some churches and then move on and do some international ministry and, and be able to kind of get a picture and a vision for what I'm supposed to do. So I go to the Amazon jungle, we see miracles explode. I mean, people getting healed, deaf ears opening, blind eyes opening, tumors disappearing. It was amazing. I, and I, during this time, I hear the Lord tell me, go to Ukraine. I had never wanted to go to Ukraine at this point. That was just wild. But I bought a one-way ticket. And I had come back to the States, traveled, and I was getting ready to uh, go overseas. And I had, like I said, no monthly support. Then I get a phone call from a friend and said, hey, I want people to support you monthly. And um, how about you fly over here? We gather people together and we're going to just pitch in and we're going to start a sponsor base for you. I was in shock. Absolutely in shock. I bought my flight, flew over. I had just enough, about four hundred and fifty dollars a month coming in. I was like, "All right, I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna make it count." God, you got this. I go to Ukraine for two months, do healing meetings in the broke in some of the most broken places in Ukraine right after the war. I got to speak in churches that had um, their pastors get martyred. Uh, spoke in churches that were uh, put together from convenience stores right about. A hundred yards from the very front line of the war with bullet holes in the back of the wall, standing, preaching and praying for the sick and seeing the sick get healed. I was, I just was shocked. From there, I go to South Africa and again, just seeing the Lord connect me with friends and do healing meetings, go to Mozambique to go to Iris. And literally, guys, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just praying, saying, God, I don't feel like I'm supposed to go back to the States. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm just going to follow you. So I would pray and fast. I went to China for after that, after my passport got stolen. So my passport gets stolen. My All my electronics get stolen. My, my uh, wallet is gone. I don't know where it is. It either got stolen or I lost it. Well, God brought it all back. And the money came in. I mean, some of the most difficult situations where you you know you have to order a new passport, the embassy, and anyway, uh, my Chinese visa was inside of the passport that was stolen. But they ended up giving me a visa out of country anyway. I go there and I travel, and uh, got to serve at some amazing locations that I'm not going to mention on this video uh, because of situations there. But uh, it was incredible. Um, after that time, I knew it was time for me to move overseas full time. And I had made a decision, met with some leaders and committed to serve in Asia for a certain amount of time. 
And while I was there, I was watching a video. And on this video, I was, I was in a dormitory with some Muslim students. And these guys were, you know, just having conversations with me about the Lord. And we were talking about, what, you know, what God can do. And I was showing them some healing meetings with Todd White. And as I'm going through YouTube, I'm looking and I saw a commercial for a conference. And as I turn it on, I see Lou Engel and he's like rocking back and forth, you know. And I'm listening. I'm just, you know, I'm sharing the gospel with these guys. They're Muslims, you know, from Bangladesh. And I'm just trying to build this connection with them. And then I just hear myself say, and I say, I'm going to go there. And I stop. And I'm like, what do you mean you're going to go there? Like you just came back from the States. You use your six weeks. I mean, what are you talking about? I look at the whole event and it was a one day event. And I felt in my spirit like I need to go there. Well... I ended up praying, fasting, felt like, yep, got to go, bought my ticket, flew out to this event. I mean, this is crazy. Found out that some good friends of mine who now work for the one of the main organizations that put this on was with YWAM. One of my, some of my friends, including one guy that I went to high school with, they're some of the leaders there. I got hooked up and they gave me free housing and they were even willing to cover my meals. All of the stuff got to put together. I came out for some exclusive uh, evenings with different speakers that came in all prior to this event. This event comes on, 60,000 people are gathered in a stadium in Orlando and I'm standing on the very last hour fasting and praying for a wild missions movement to get raised up and just knowing my own story that I came out of nothing. I didn't know anything but God just said yes to my yes and I said yes to his yes. All I just wanted was for God to just take my life and here I am standing in the stadium saying, God, now that you've done it, I believe that you're going to do it for many more. Thrust us out into the harvest field. The fields are white. I'm just fasting and praying and I see a man come up to the stage with a lot of these apostolic and prophetic leaders coming up and I was like man I really want a prophetic word I should have come up to the front so somebody could see me so they could prophesy and I'm having this inner dialogue I'm thinking man if I just came up front maybe some maybe they would have seen me from the stage and give me a word and I said I said immediately well God you can prophesy you can give me a word just say it anyone can come up to me as I'm having this dialogue I hear on the loudspeaker Sean Bowles with the microphone saying, and there is a dentist here and your family are from the Ukraine and they moved to America and they moved to Washington state. And I'm sitting there, I feel like somebody punched me in the stomach. I was like, Urgh! and I was, just, I was scared. I was like, there's gotta be another dentist at first when I hear my name. And then I was here, Washington state. I mean, when he said Ukraine and so I'm like, okay, there's 60,000 people. There's maybe another Ukrainian whose name is Dennis. And right next to me, there was a guy who is Slavic and his name is Dennis. And I was like, bro, it's you. And he looks at me, he's like, bro, my parents are from Moldova, <laughs> not Ukraine, Moldova. And I was like, what? And I'm still waiting. And then people start shouting at me, my friends who, who were standing next to me said, Dennis, raise your hands. And I'm like, all of a sudden the camera goes on me, people, hundreds of thousands of people are watching on the video and stuff. Or, I mean, I don't know how many tens of thousands, wherever it was, 60,000 people at the stadium, camera goes on me and Sean Bowles begins to prophesy and tell me about what the Lord is, has done in my life, what's going on and w what's going to happen. And it was right on. I went back to Asia, fasted and prayed for a long time and I feel like this was a now word. I put everything aside, gave all, gave all my things the way that I could, took some bags and flew to Ukraine where I am now serving. Currently I'm in America, but typically I'm over there. I'm quarantined in Seattle. Um, but now I'm starting a ministry there and it's crazy. I didn't see this coming. And I know there's gonna be a lot of things that come up and things to learn and different challenges, but all I know is I'm just surrendered. I say, God, I'm not here for the greatest name or the fame this world has to offer i'm here for you I, I seek your face and any kind of strategy that comes with it all the kind of things that come along projects and all, i do all of it guys but number one numero uno numero again it's jesus christ his love his life and i just want to pray for all of you knowing that you are and you and I, we're all just one family in the Lord. This is all of us. We're just going to pray. And I'm going to ask that God would thrust you forward. And that miracles and signs and wonders would follow you. Because this is what He's worthy of. It's not about us anymore. It is what is the Lamb of God worthy of and what can Jesus do? He came as a man so that He would draw all men unto Himself. And if He finds one like you who just say yes at any cost... 
he will take it and he will pour out his holy oil. The anointing works when we pour our heart out and say, God, I offer myself as a living sacrifice. I offer myself as an empty vessel so that you might fill me up. And he pours out his holy oil and you overflow. And you overflow with not just anything, not just with miracles, not just signs and wonders, but with the very life substance of who God is. And that is what is going to launch you into different places. Why? Because people don't need me or you. People need Jesus. And if the Lord sees someone who carries him, he will send them as ambassadors of his gospel and of his name. So I'm going to pray that you would be that one. Lord, I pray for fire to come over the people that are watching and that you would thrust them forward into the nations and that you would do what only you can do with their lives. I pray for hunger and grace to come over them and they would be people, Father, that are not satisfied with the status quo. They cannot live, God, just for the namesake of what it, of Christianity and, and, and of, a, of, a, of some kind of ritualistic life, but they would need to see the worthiness of Jesus and live according to this beautiful gospel. God, would you ignite hearts and leave them never the same today on this Easter weekend. Lord, would you consume us with everything that you have. Burn us up, God. Burn them up today. Light them up. I pray right now. I lay my hand on these people over this place, God, and I pray, God, would you do the impossible through them in Jesus name. Amen. Love you and bless you guys.